Hello everyone. In this video, I'll explain the three different Azure services on which you can run your containers and then provide the different features, use cases and the pricing of these services so that it will be easy for you to decide which service will fit for your purpose. So let me start with Azure Container Instance. Azure Container Instance is a serverless container service where you can run your containers without managing the underlying infrastructure. Using this service, you can spin up on-demand containers and the underlying infrastructure is managed by the Microsoft. So the hypervisor isolation for the secure application is managed by Microsoft itself. However, there are a few limitations too that Azure Container Instance is designed specifically for quick and short-lived applications as it doesn't support the feature like the service discovery, load balancing. So only the isolated application which doesn't need extensive integration needs to be run on Azure Container Instances. And if we'll discuss about the different use cases, so the data processing jobs, you have some temporary jobs which will run overnight. So these data processing on-demand jobs run better on Azure Container Instances. You can even use it for event-driven applications where you can integrate it with the Azure Logic Apps. And finally, if you're using the Azure Kubernetes service and suddenly there is a requirement of more on-demand containers, in that case, you can integrate Azure Container Instance with AKS so that it can handle the elastic bursting. So in short, if you want to run the containers on ACI, then you should be running quick, event-driven or temporary application or short-lived applications. Now moving on to Azure Kubernetes service. So AKS is a fully managed Kubernetes service which provides the full Kubernetes orchestration. That means you have the full control over the underlying infrastructure, though the control panel is managed by the Microsoft. However, you will have full control over the worker nodes. And this is the reason you can set up advanced networking and security into the Azure Kubernetes service. The most important feature is the cluster auto scaling. So you can scale your pods horizontally as well as vertically. Certain features which differentiate the AKS service from other container services are like custom resource definition, integration with the service mesh like Istio provides a cherry on top. So if we'll discuss about the use cases, it's more suitable for enterprise grade application which needs more complexity so that the service discovery and load balancing, everything can be taken care of using AKS. Because AKS works on the Kubernetes service, so it provides a hybrid cloud deployment. So if you have a cluster running on-prem or in any other cloud, then you can integrate that cluster with the Azure Kubernetes service. Even the migration of the pods from that cluster to the AKS can be easily done. And if you have certain compliance and regulatory requirement, in that case, Azure Kubernetes service is the best fit because you will have full control and you can take care of all the compliance requirements. Now moving on to Azure Container Apps. ACI is a fully managed serverless container platform designed for running the microservices and containerized application. Though in this case too, similar to ACI, the underlying infrastructure is managed by the Microsoft. Azure Container Apps works on AKS in the background, which is managed by Microsoft. So it provides different features of the Kubernetes like event-driven Kubernetes auto-scaling as well as distributed application runtime for the, for the state management of the application. So in short, Azure Container Apps provide a sweet spot which handles the medium level of complexity between the applications as the integration and the scaling works very well here and reduces the overhead of managing the underlying infrastructure. So the different use cases are the microservices where the scaling, integration and the, and the state management is required. In that case, ACA is the better option. Event-driven application with the logic apps as well as the event hub where the on-demand containers can be run based on the different events. And ACI is also very famous for deploying the different APIs. And in case there are a lot of hits on the API, then automatically the scaling will happen and the more containers will spin up, which will handle the load on the, your APIs. So now if we'll consider the different features and the consideration between these three different services, the complexity of the Azure container instances is very low. However, Azure Container Apps is the medium and the AKS is high because there you have the full control of your worker nodes and you have to manage the underlying infrastructure. If we'll talk about the scalability, so auto scaling works on Azure Container Apps. However, in the case of ACI, there is only simple scaling. And in the case of AKS, you can define the different scaling, 
it support custom metrics too. And in the case of the management, only the AKS is the one where you need to manage your cluster. And if we'll talk about the control, AKS has an extensive control. ACI has a minimal. However, Azure Container Apps has the limited level of control. Pricing I'll discuss further in this video. And there are different integrated features like KEDA, Kubernetes event-driven auto-scaling, as well as distributed application runtime for microservices. ACI just support the basic container execution. However, in the case of AKS, it supports service mesh, custom resource definition, load balancing. Security, ACI provides the minimum security option. In the case of ACA, it provides the medium level, which mostly suits your purpose. However, if you need an advanced level security, like the network policies and the RBAC, all these are taken care in the AKS. And for the ecosystem and integrations, ACA provides a good integration with the different Azure services. And AKS even supports the third party tools. And the last one is best for developers needing simplicity, microservices and event driven workloads. That is for ACA. For the ACI is the short lived task, simple jobs, isolated workloads. And finally for the AKS, where the full Kubernetes capabilities for the large scale or the complex deployment needs to be taken care of. So in short, if you're running a very basic application or event driven application, in that case, ACI is recommended. If you're running your containers across the multiple platforms, like different clouds, on-prem, and if you're running very complex enterprise level applications where there is a service mesh required, the load balancing between the containers is required, in that case, AKS is recommended. However, if you have a very small team, like only the developers who can run the microservices and want to deploy it by themselves, in that case, I would recommend the ACA because it has all the features which are required to run the microservices without needing the infrastructure team. So integration with the different services like logging and monitoring, as well as the load balancers, everything is supported using ACA. And the best part is you don't need to manage the underlying infrastructure. So if you have a team of developers, they can manage their own infrastructure using the ACA. Now let's talk about the pricing. If I'll talk about the pricing of Azure Container Instances, it's a pay as you go based on the different size you will be charged. However, you can use the reservations where you can buy the saving plans for compute and use it against the Azure Container Instances. So if you're running the Linux operating system, then based on the memory and vCPU, you have to pay these charges per GB and per vCPU. And there are options of buying the savings plan where you can save around 52% of the cost if you'll buy the three year savings plan. Now, if you want to run the Windows operating system, in that case, pricing is a bit different. You can check on this page itself. And for the Windows software duration, there is a separate charges which are per GB. So this is for Azure Container Instance. If we'll go to Azure Kubernetes Service. So in the case of Azure Kubernetes Service, it's pay as you go. However, you can buy the reservation using the savings plan or directly the reservations because here the virtual machines are involved for the worker nodes and the spot instances. Cluster per hour, $0.10 uh, cluster per hour. For the standard tier, it's the same. However, for the premium tier, it's more 0 0.60. And this is the pricing for the control plane. And for the different nodes means you are using the multiple virtual machines. So you have to pay for those virtual machines too. Now, if we'll talk about the Azure container apps, you can buy the savings plan in this case because you don't manage the underlying infrastructure. So there are no virtual machines involved here or just pay as you go. So there are different plans, resource consumption plan, where based on the virtual CPU and the memory, you pay per second. And there is a different idle usage also. However, you can set the auto scaling to zero so that you will not be charged for anything. And if there are different requests, so that is also charged, which is very reasonable, $0.40 per million requests. And it becomes more cheaper, like 17% cheaper if you'll buy the savings plan. 
and there are dedicated plans also these are the consumption plans which is based on demand however if there are dedicated plans those are charged per hour based on the virtual cpu memory so it depends which one to use so if you have the event driven applications in that case you need the consumption plan because because your application will be short lived and you don't want to pay for the resources when your application is not running however if you're running the production level application which needs to be up and running in that case the dedicated plan needs to be chosen to summarize this video we have discussed the features use cases limitations and the pricing for three different services which are azure container application azure container instances and azure kubernetes service and based on all that information now you can easily decide which service will fit your purpose so that's all for this video i hope you liked it please like and subscribe thank you so much